Hi, I'm Rob Simmons, Product Manager with Garrett Advancing Motion. The topic I'm going to present is turbo system optimization. While turbocharger selection is a critical part of your project, selecting the correct mating components is equally as important. Optimizing the entire system ensures that the engine will make the target horsepower and everything functions properly. What I hope you take away from this is not only a better understanding of turbo system components, but also where you can find this information for future use and projects. The areas that I'm going to cover are based on questions that we've received during trade shows and races, as well as areas I feel are commonly overlooked. So let's get started. There are two types of blow-off valves, vent to atmosphere and recirculation, also known as a bypass valve. The vent to atmosphere blow-off valve is used on engines with a MAP sensor. For proper function, connect the signal line to an intake manifold source. Surge can occur if the spring is too stiff. The spring is usually replaceable, so if surge is occurring, a softer spring should be installed. The bypass valve is used on an engine with a MAF sensor. Again, the signal line should be connected to an intake manifold source. For optimal performance, position the valve close to the compressor outlet, but only if the valve is designed for high temperature operation. For bypass valves, surge can occur if the valve or the outlet plumbing are too restrictive. Using the proper blow-off valve affects turbo performance and durability. Therefore, the correct blow-off valve should be selected for your specific application and installed properly. There are two types of wastegates, internal and external. Internal wastegates are part of the turbocharger and integrated into the turbine housing. Most OEM style actuators are not designed for vacuum. Vacuum can damage the diaphragm, which could lead to excessive boost pressure and engine damage. There are two options to connect the signal line to ensure only positive pressure goes to the actuator. Connect the line from the compressor outlet to the actuator or the compressor outlet to a boost controller and then to the actuator. Using a boost controller will enable finer boost control than using just the actuator. Keep in mind, intake manifold pressure is limited by the spring rate of the actuator. So if using a boost controller and you still cannot increase the peak boost pressure, most likely an actuator with a stiffer spring will be required. The external wastegate is separate from the turbo and integrated into the exhaust. How the wastegate is, in, is integrated into the manifold greatly affects the flow capacity. While 90 degrees to the manifold is usually the easiest way to install the wastegate, this method can reduce the flow by up to 50%. The ideal connection is 45 degrees with a smooth transition, which is illustrated in the photo to the right. And just like the actuator for an internal wastegate, the signal line should be connected to positive pressure the same way, to the compressor outlet with or without a boost controller. The advantage of an external wastegate as compared to an internal is higher flow capacity and the ability to easily change the spring rates. There are a large variety of spring rates available for external wastegates making them very versatile to meet your application needs. This concludes the video presentation. I hope you found this information helpful. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, this information is available on the Garrett Motion website, along with other general and technical information. Thank you for your time and good luck with your future turbo projects.